Wonderful. So we are live. Welcome to all. Uh, I've been given the thumbs up by Edward. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Um, welcome to all of you for joining. So I have the honor and the pleasure to start off your Monday with a little bit more motivation. Now, I I'm sure motivation is not something new. I know we have uh, a number of you piling in. The participant lineup is, is just rocking right now. And, you know, ultimately, ultimately, motivation is something we've all, I'm sure, felt at some point in our life. And, you know, as we know, sometimes that, that spark of motivation, that weekend seminar, that motivation, well, it might be helpful, it might feel good, but is it enough? So today, what, what I'd love to do is talk a little bit about motivation from the angle of a high performer. Now, when I say that, you know, I'm grateful to be able to study and apply the principles and practices of the world's best. We call them high achievers. And yes, there's an actual science behind this. So what is motivation? You know, when, when you're feeling motivated, well, what's, what's the other side of motivated, deflated, right? So somewhere in between. And, and just think about when I'm feeling motivated, what, what do I notice? What is it that I, I feel mentally and physically? And you probably guessed it, I feel energy. You know, a big part of motivation is making sure you have generated sufficient energy, right? Sparked it. But here's the key, and this is what we're gonna talk about today. How do we amplify that? How do we sustain that motivation? Just because you got your delicious cup, cheers, Organo, and everyone part of the corporate team, Paul, uh, Bernie, thank you so much, Edward, everyone who's, who's keeping up with the orders, the demands, the evolution. I mean, the market's up and it's our opportunity. And there's never been a better time to use this as the match, the lighter, to spark some motivation. But what else are we going to need to do, apply, or become in order to sustain our motivation long term? So, you know, first off, what I'd love you to do, because it's always great to get into the peak state, an element, a memory of a time where you were dialed in. Think about that for a sec. You know, was it a year ago? Was it when you hit that last rank? Was it, you know, when, when you started that business? Um, maybe when you, when you met your, your spouse or partner and you had a child, like what was that time where you true, you felt like you were so motivated? Maybe write that down. Maybe a, a, a year. When was I feeling most motivated? And, you know, unfortunately, you know, the, the, the audio books are helpful. They're not enough, right? The self-help, the, the seminars, the webinars, they're helpful but it's up to you if you truly want to be motivated long term. So check this out. You know, the, the first thing, the first thing that comes into play when we're rolling into the station, the train station, that is motivation. We have to have an expectancy. Now, expectancy is I expect good things. I expect that everything is working out for me as a result of me and through me. Right. Because if you expect something's going to happen that you're going to you know, back off of, well, it's not working out. Well, good luck being motivated. So what we want to do is plant firmly the expectation of what do I get to learn today? Who do I get to share it with? If you have an expectancy that good things are coming and you know how to handle it, right? Think about that time where you expected something and like Christmas, it arrived. You know, so here's, here's the key is that your expectation literally dominates your life and generates your reality. Think about that for a sec. You know, a lot of people will talk about what they expect. Oh, I expect this was going to happen and it did, and they didn't necessarily want it. So the key here is your expectation requires considerable focus on what you want. So if you're looking for a hack right now to get back on track, and take your expectancy long-term, focus on what you want. And if you notice, and I'm gonna be honest, it's kind of tough right now, I get it. You know, many people have lost their, you know, their, their main job and you know, like, like many, it's, it's an opportunity to say, hey, what can I be doing with this time? And if you focus on, hey, you know, this gives me more time to, to work and share Organo with those worldwide, then, 
got a pretty good expectancy. You know, your focus is in the right place. So that's the first thing. If you want to spark motivation, right? Expect good things. Focus on what you want. Number two, and this is a big one, ambition. Most people, you know, if, if you think about those in your life that you know of, you're like, hey, who is, who's really ambitious? You know, that, that word is something that comes to mind. Like, are you ambitious? Do you feel ambitious? And I know sometimes it feels like, oh, I can't compare to that person. They're at that other rank and, you know, I'm over here. Or that person, you know, has that kind of house and I'm over here. Here's the key, though. If you look at all successful people, at some point in time, they are either generating and rekindling ambitions. Now, here's what's interesting. The ambition itself doesn't have to be focused on your business. It could be, hey, my ambition is I want to take more trips. Great. And you're looking through the Travala portal and you're like, oh, oh, look at this beachside getaway. Oh, look at this resort in the mountains. You know, here's the key to ambitions. If you don't know what you want, it's hard to expect and focus on that, isn't it? So when we're looking at ambitions, you know, maybe it's, hey, you know, I've, I've wanted that special car. I wanted, I want that sound, that muscle, the muscle car. Like for me, I, I love the, the feel and sound of American muscle. And, you know, I'm kind of bringing a little bit of that into my, into my truck and it's a cool feeling. It feels good. Now, I'm not saying that's my main motivation. My motivation is freedom. My main ambition, ambition is freedom, choice, lifestyle. I can choose how healthy I want to be, how emotionally sound I want to be with whomever I choose to be it with. So, you know, this first level here, you know, we're getting into Motivation Monday. Hopefully this is not too technical for you all. But you know, the first thing is, what is motivation? Well, we got motivated or deflated. So we got to bring the energy. But if you think back to a time when you felt most motivated, most motivated, just on fire, you couldn't get it wrong. And even if you did, well, you figured it out. You picked yourself up and you got going. You got your butt back up and you got, you got moving. So the first level to motivation, if you're going to spark it, right? We got to spark it with expectancy. As I was mentioning, that's our focus. What are we focused on tends to be what we're going to expect. So if, as an example, maybe you're trying to pay off some bills, well, focusing on, you know, I got to pay off bills, I got to pay off bills, then guess what happens? Your expectancy will bring in more bills. Now, what's great about our life, our organo freedom and opportunity is, you know, you don't have those types of bills from the franchisee and all the licenses and agreements running a brick and mortar. Now, as you know, Rod Norville will tell you, it's click and order, right? Diane Solano, it's like work from phone. We don't even have to work from home if we don't want anymore. So, you know, the key here is that we need to focus on what we want, because instead, what if I could say, hey, if I want to focus on generating new income and that'll feel good to give it back to the people that I owe, that feels good. Not, you know, I got to pay off bills. I pay off bills you know, then all of a sudden you do attract. So expectancy is psychology. That's mastering your mind, psychological discipline. And then the other side, as I said, to sparking motivation, again, is your ambitions. And if you haven't done a dream board, do one. Cut and paste with the kids, right? My, um, my wallpaper on my laptop is literally a mountain-esque escape. It's beautiful. Same with my phone. Um, as an example, you want to talk motivation. I'm actually in my beautiful cottage that came from um, a belief and a dream that I had. And guess what? I don't actually even live here. This has turned out to be a very successful Airbnb. But for what about three months, I'll be up here because of the respect to hosts and guests, Airbnb and what's going on with COVID. So, you know, here's, here's the whole theme today is don't wait for Monday to get motivated. This is something we have to spark it every day. Unfortunately, I may seem really motivated, but I go through the ups and downs too. And the goal is to create as many hills. And if you come down on a valley, you know, it, it lessens, bring it back up. What am I excited about? What am I looking forward to today? It's excited to be on here with you. And I know there's some big things coming. And so the next level here 
is where it can get a little bit more tricky. And by tricky, I mean, it's so easy to do, it's easy not to do. You know, common sense is not always common practice. And if you want to sustain motivation, so right now, you know, you lit the match. I should have had a lighter here, I could have lit it. And, you know, the key is expectancy, right? And ambition. But if you want to generate that long term, it's not enough. What will be required of you? You know, high performers always ask, you know, not what can the mission or what can you do for me? What can I do for you? And what can I do for that mission? What's required of me right now? Because that's how you become the best of who you're meant to be. So the second step to motivation is in order to sustain it long term, we need to bring in the principles and the practices. Principles and practices. I'm going to go in through a few today and I'm literally going to hack it with you and then I'm going to slap it back and you go to it. There's two categories that are required when we're stepping into sustaining our motivation long term and we're looking at principles and practices. There's two categories. The first one is your attitude. You know, you've probably heard your attitude determines your altitude. You don't feel like it. Okay. Then don't feel like it. Go on and don't expect anything to come to you. If you don't feel like it, you know, here's the key is, you know, many times none of us feel like it, but if you continue to apply the principles and practices and you adjust your attitude, thus you adjust your altitude. So think of a time where, you know, you had that, that stinking thinking, I like to call it, where you just, maybe you went for a walk, maybe, you know, good old, nothing better on the attitude or the altitude sickness, wink, wink, than a cup of OG. What I love about my OG, beautiful espresso mixed in with a sachet of King, game over, game over entirely, no competition there. So, you know, when we're looking at attitude, here's what's interesting. You do not need a major attitude adjustment. In fact, that is not believable. It's highly inachievable. It's not likely that you can take someone who has an attitude here and shift it there. Maybe unless you put them in a military camp and even that, who, who knows? But here's what we need to do. Like a plane, a plane, 90% of the time is off course. And what does it do? It auto corrects, it readjusts. It readjusts, it readjusts, it readjusts. So your attitude, when you wake up, how are you feeling? What are you focused on? What are you excited about? What's your ambition? How's my attitude right now? Well, if you snap on your wife or your husband, on your kids, on the dog or the cat, the gerbil, the hamster, um, it's really difficult for you to you know, hide that. Now, what we wanna do is use that, like how is my attitude? when I wake up, when I get started, how would I like my attitude? You know, that is a key is that your attitude will determine how far you go in life. And, you know, I, I recall one, one of my, one of my mentors, he, uh, you know, he was in fact a, a general laborer on a major construction site, a day laborer, literally up on the steel. This is back in the forties. And, you know, he would see even some people, fall. You know, there weren't a lot of safety harnesses back in the day, building up massive steel uh, structures. And every time some of his teammates, his, his, his crew would be asked, Hey, could you do this? Could you do that? They would moan and groan. They would moan and groan. They would complain and whine. Oh, this is the, I'm too beneath that. I'm too good, whatever it is. And so this particular man, his name is Peter Ragnar. You know, when he was asked, no matter how trivial, or how silly it was, he went even beyond what they asked. He would always say, well, I would love to. I'd love to. I'd love to find a way to, you know, I'll be happy to clean that toilet. You know, I'd be happy. You, you, you need that done? No problem. And here's what's interesting. In the years that followed, he went from general laborer to being foreman in charge of a $500 million operation. And this is going back many, 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 many decades. So you can imagine how big that is. And what's, what's important here is if you show up with an attitude of in service, I'd love to, how can I support you? 
I will tell you, you will not run out of business. You will not run out of opportunity. People will literally be attracted to your attitude. Now, what are the principles and practices though? Well, you know, are you reading? What kind of book are you reading? You know, I'm reading great books, you know, shout out to Dr. Bob and obviously Kelly and the recommendation for your career, Richard Bliss Brooks. That's one of the books I'm going to be rereading. Changed my life. Gave me the attitude that, hey, you know what? I'm going to allow builders, like-minded entrepreneurs to come to me and I'm going to show them. I'm going to support them. You know, I had an attitude shift from that going back. I mean, you know, GoPro and Diane and all the attitude shifts that I had that this is the real business and I can make this happen and I'm going to do it. So what else would you need to do? Well, journaling is really great because again, if you think of attitude, where's the first place you would point if you said attitude right here. So again, it's another level of psychology and it's our focus, right? What you focus on expand your attitude feels low could be that you're focused on the wrong thing is go back and check your expectations. Always manage what you're focused on. Audiobooks, reading, journaling, your attitude, get out in nature, go for a walk. You know, so that's going to be key. I'm going to get to one of the most powerful hacks to start your day that will also in that first hour, not only start your day the right way as a high performer would want you to, but by the end of that week, wouldn't it be cool to have 30% more time in your pocket? That's actually true. So what I'm going to teach you in, in just a second, we'll, we'll start the day, ignite the day in the right way. I'm going to, we're going to look at these elements. We're going to backtrack on this first hour. And by the end of the week, if you do this one thing in that first hour of the day, by the end of the week, you would have gained 30% more productivity, more time. And this is proven study after study. And this isn't just stuff that I was, you know, checking out, you know, hobbying on a weekend. You know, I, I, I had some major breakdowns in health, got introduced to the mushrooms. I had major breakdowns in business and in life. I had to find the sciences. I had to find what would lead me out of the jungle. And so the other part to attitude, attitude is great. It's not enough. It's 50, 50. The other side to sustaining motivation, check your attitude, readjust your attitude. The second step is your environment. You know, you've probably heard the phrase, you know, you are the average of the five people you associate with the most. Now, unfortunately that, that one statement goes a lot deeper than most people expect, you know, when in fact you have an expectation around you of like, well, you know, our average income, well, it should be there. Here's the thing. It goes further. You're the average mental capacity of the people you hang around with. If your vibrancy, your stamina, if you're acting and treating people a certain way, it's really interesting that you tend to congregate with people who are either most likely or you'll become more like, and there's an averaging effect. So sometimes what's, what happens, and I noticed it, and maybe you have too, is when you're looking to grow and be a better version, a better person and get out there and the great attitude and acts of service to make it happen. What, what, what tends to happen is maybe you outgrow your environment. You know, maybe some of the people, Hey, part of your environment isn't just people, but you know, how much TV are you watching? What are you watching? Right. I would rather be plugged in here than plugged in on CNN, Fox news. I mean, come on now. So, you know, it requires maintenance. Maintenance is key in your environment. Imagine right now you have a cluddy and a clutter and a clutter rich environment with a lot of clutter, you know, unfortunately that blocks the passage of new experiences and energy. So I'm going to challenge you if, if, you know, if your office needs a little bit of a regroup, some cleaning, a little bit more high performing, just some dusting, get rid of some stuff, do it right. Your environment will literally dictate how long your motivation is permitted to go. You know, you can imagine, you know, hanging out here, you know, why, how, how could you not be motivated? But you know what? Here's the thing. I actually lived in a, in a moldy environment many, many, many years ago. And despite that, I, I did what I could. I found a way. And 
my environment had to change. I made sure it changed, but if your environment isn't exactly what you want right now, maybe you're renting and it's like, well, it's all I can afford. Well, guess what you need to do? You really need to step up your attitude. You need to make up for what you can't have at this moment, but maybe part of your expectation, right? Spark and motivation and part of your ambition set is that I want an environmental upgrade. I want a new space. I want a new scene, something more serene. So think of it like this, because if you can break down motivation into chunks, you're, you're going to rock this. You're going to knock their socks off. So let's get back in because I have one trick, one trick for you in these last few minutes. They're going to help you dial in your day. I mean, in the comment section below, wherever you're watching this, type in, I want to be a high performer. And I mean, I want to be a high performer in caps locks. Let's do it. So here's how they start their day. High performers, they grab their phone, you know, they look at their email inbox, they go on the TV. No, they don't. They don't do any of that. High performers start their day, they're very mindful. They don't grab their phone. You know, if you need an alarm, maybe that's a conversation on your sleep schedule because your circadian cycle, right? Your day night cycle should wake you up appropriately. Again, that's another conversation. I would recommend having your phone in another room. So it's not beside you, of course, but here's the thing, that first hour, that first hour is not for text messages. I know there you're going to say, but Andrew, what if I'm going to lose business? You won't, you'll lose your psychology. You'll lose the energy you need to generate. You will actually become less productive long-term and in the short term. So here's the key that first hour, you're not grabbing your phone. You're not going on social media. You're not going in your email inbox because guess what? Hey, oh my goodness. Somebody needs me right now. Good for them. Relax. If it's an emergency, they wouldn't be calling you, right? It's called 911. And let's unfortunate, let's hope none of that happens because it is pretty challenging out there right now. It's challenging all of us. You know, all of us are being impacted by this, but your goal right now, do you want to come out of this reborn? Maybe you, you know, you haven't felt like as confident as a legend as you might appear or feel like you deserve to be. Is this the time? Legends are born in the ashes, right? When things are challenged, when the world shifts, you're going to rise up. So the reason we're talking about the phone, the email, the text, the social media, in that first hour, there's actually something that you do to your psychology when you plug in to someone else's life and world. It's called the comparison frame. And if you're comparing yourself to others to start the day, that's it. You know, you've literally, you literally lost energy, lost focus. You've already started to lose time because focus energy actually equals time. And the key here is that we need to start the day. We need to wake up, maybe some stretching. You got your cup, your ceremonial OG. I got to have another sip of this bad boy. And get into some reading for 10, 15, some journaling. You know, maybe you go into your sauna. I went on my rebounder and my vibration machine and I take the dog for a walk. I usually spend more than an hour unplugged so that I can figure out, you know, who am I today? How do I want to feel? What am I focused on? Who do I get to show up for? You know, at a time like this, people need you more than ever. They don't need you necessarily as you've been in those, you know, bumpy circumstances. They need the best of who you can be. So, you know, I challenge you if maybe you're feeling like, well, motivation, you know, I'll try it. You know, is trying it enough? Why, well, you know, imagine Nike said, just try it. I mean, how well would that go? How many sponsorships and how many athletes would, would have the endorsements? Unless you have that, that intentionality, that, that focus of do it. Do it. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's for your spouse. Maybe it's for your kids. Maybe it's for your family, your relatives in another country and you really want to, you know, send them back some extra cash because that money is just an equivalent energy of a job well done. And, you know, what's important here is that we can all be more motivated. 
right? Spark that motivation with expectancy and your focus on what you want, your major obsession or your ambition, right? And then in order to sustain it, we need to go a little further. We need to have the right attitude. We need to adjust that attitude, you know, plant seeds and water and hydrate and nourish that attitude. We also need the right environment. If something's not feeling right, do something about it. And most importantly, bring it all together. Let's put it that first hour, high performers, organo high performers, they're ready for the next level. They'll do what it takes. They love the product. They believe in the company. Believe in yourself. Take that first hour. Start to write down what you truly want, what's most important. And by all means, get out there and be golden because you're worth it. Thanks for tuning in. Motivation Monday. My name is Andrew Skopik, and we'll talk with you again soon.